um, we will present this paper where we define two courses uh, with uh, two types of uh, implementations. One of them with uh, only three, four uh, softwares to explain, and other one with a lot of softwares uh, in a brief uh, time. I don't know what is the problem because I, here I have a little index. Okay, no problem. We have only uh, 11 slides. <laughs> this introduction, data, method, etc. Et et okay, <coughs> uh, we present uh, two educational proposals centered on project-based learning. Uh, in this case, uh, the PBL uh, project are uh, designed for uh, our architecture and engineering building degrees. Both courses are focused on the spatial representation of 3D models in architectural training. Uh, the one of the most important skills that the, our students uh, need to be uh, prepared is in the, the representation of the 3D and understand uh, the better options to present the, 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 the project. And the study focuses on comparing the students' competence and motivation in two different educational scenarios. One of them is prepare and allow them to experience with three, four uh, main applications. And other one, in the same time, uh, a crash course using about 15 different applications and techniques. The use of uh, ICTs in educational methods, especially related with architecture, urban planning, uh, building engineering uh, is defining the new curriculum. Uh, we can say that uh, these uh, methods are so novelty because in the last five years, ten years maybe, we can explain that uh, these methods were implemented in, in this type of degrees. We have a lot of teachers, a lot of faculty, uh, with an age that uh, maybe we can define a digital uh, native in this section that our students, but there are um, something different because a lot of uh, uh, teachers are working with uh, physical models or prefer to work with uh, printer plants that not using, uh, for example, uh, a mobile device or on a tablet to view in a 3D virtual uh, space, in a 3D virtual uh, uh, platform the the project. We we think that the students should be able to get competence and skills uh, to active and collaborative learning and digital information management. This is only possible using this type of uh, exercises because it's very difficult when the students need to, for example, divide um, his work and one of them need to work with a printed plan, the other one need to uh, draw uh, for example, the, the windows, the door, uh, and when they need to join, uh, the work is very difficult. Using platforms with collaborative learning is more easy. They can join uh, their work uh, more easy. And for this reason, I think that we think that the project-based learning applied to the architectural education is, more, uh, is, is very important. And one of the main ongoing changes in professional architecture design is the use of digital photometric acquisition using combined, combined strategies. Um, more of uh, the, the, bas the, 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 the base of the, of the study is the change that we can uh, find in the representation of the 3D in architectural world. Uh, Ten years ago, we can uh, talk about uh, computer-assisted design, and now we need to talk about building information modeling. It's very different, um, it's more specific, it's necessary, and actually when you need, uh, you, ha you have to present a project, um, the government and the Europe uh, community uh, demand that you present the project using uh, VM. The most relevant aspect in architectural teaching in this regard lies is in the acquisition of the necessary special skills to assess the visual impact. And of course, we need to evaluate how the students um, view the, uh, the design or view the implementation of this type of projects. For us, it's very important how the student accept 
the proposals uh, that we can implement in the class. For us, it's very important this emotional response of the student and the motivation uh, in to to work with uh, different implementations, different techniques. The case one, the course one, is defined with uh, the use of different uh, uh, software. For this case, we uh, began drawing the model in Revit. Then we pass the model to 3D Max to put the lights, to put the uh, cameras, uh, the textures, the materials. And finally, using Photoshop or Illustrator, they have to present um, the project in a classical model using, for example, A2 panel. In a second step, they need to generate an advanced 3D model using 3D Max. And then three, this th uh, 3D model go to this uh, software, the Cleaver, for interactive visualization checking. This software only checks if your model can be exported in a FBX uh, format to Unity, and then you can navigate using uh, this engine, of this game engine, to uh, walk around your project. And if Cleaver said, OK, your model is correct, you can then uh, export to using FBX to Unity and implementation, the navigation of the, of the model. The case two, uh, well, is mm, some difficult to explain. <laughs> if you have some questions, uh, finally the presentation, Mr. Ernesto can <laughs> answer the, the questions because uh, he is the, the sign of this uh, course. Okay, the proposed project comprises three groups of complex practice, and in this case, you've seen laser scanners, uh, 3D printers, augmented reality glasses, uh, or virtual, uh, virtual reality devices, for example, Oculus Rift. The, the idea is the same. Okay, you need to represent the project, you need to represent <coughs> a complex building and the uh, surface around the, uh, around the project. And in this case, the proposal is, OK, go to this software. You need only to uh, work with this option, this option, this option, because it's the best option. It's on a free uh, software to get the model to pass to the next software and have the, the next steps to, to implement the, the, the project. OK? The design or the schedule of the of the course is uh, this one. Um, what's the process the process to implement the course? In a first step, uh, we define a profile test or pre course survey, uh, where two main aspects were evaluated of the students. The first one, the capacity to implement the proposed methodology. The students were asked about the technology. Uh, what technology do you have in, at home? Uh, do you like technology? Do you like to view? Do you like to work with uh, mobile devices? Do you like to work with laptop? Do you like to work uh, uh, all type of technologies? OK. And for this uh, question, we have more or less the motivation about the students to use uh, different technologies. Maybe can explain that this question is uh, so confused, but uh, for us it's very important because we have detected in the three past years using this type of test, uh, uh, some groups, for example, are less motivated at the beginning of the course, and finally, the academic results are poor uh, that other years, for example, that the pre-test say us, OK, you have a group very interested, very motivated. Maybe the level of the students is uh, not so good that uh, other years, but the motivation about to use different technologies or different techniques to draw and to project, uh, the final uh, marks of the students are better. And uh, the degree of motivation and perceived uh, usefulness about the techniques that we will implement uh, along the, the course. The students were asked about the various technologies and their knowledge, perception, etc. 
This graphics only represents that uh, we have two different groups, and we want to evaluate if we have the same type of the students. As, can, as you can see in the paper, uh, the conclusion in the pretest is okay, we have an uh, heterogeneous, um, homogeneous uh, groups with the more or less the same questions about, or the same as were about the motivation of the students. We can uh, start the, the two methodologies without difference. Um, the results presented in the paper and in the previous slide uh, show that the two groups had similar technology profiles. A statistical difference were not uh, significant. And assessing the different degrees of initial motivation of the two groups, the result must be studied in order to evaluate the relation of the motivation. Because we know that uh, in some questions, the perception of the useful of the software are different between uh, in comparison of the two groups. Uh, we can say that now we are uh, analyzing the results of this uh, course that finalized in June of 2015. Uh, we have the problem, I think that if you are faculty or you are teachers, the, the problem to, to start the course is uh, so difficult. We have a lot of work and uh, we are analyzing the results uh, very slow. Um, for this presentation, the, the, the past week, I, oops. Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, uh, this is the um, two uh, tests that we passed, the two surveys that we passed on the, on the final of the course. The first one about uh, the, the why the questions is the, are the same that in the first step in the pretest, and then we can compare before and after the, the, the course what are the sensation, the motivation of the student. We have in the blue section, the questions about satisfaction and usability of the software's applications that the students uh, can use. And finally, we pass on a qualitative uh, survey, bipolar laddering assessment. This, uh, this type of survey is very useful for us because when you, uh, when you use a quantitative test, uh, we ask about uh, specific questions. But in the previous years, we know that it's very important, uh, okay, to the students, talk about the experience. What are the best? What are the, uh, what, do you, what options do you not like the, about the, 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 the course? And with this type of test, for us, it's very important because we can identify the three, four, five uh, more um, weakness uh, options about the, the, the project and of course the, the best options of the projects. And for this option, we can complement the quantitative test. For example, in this case, you can view uh, as, uh, like an, uh, blue questions, but that the, the white questions, the common questions of the two uh, courses. And here we can view the um, Five tests of one group, five tests of the uh, second group, aleatorious test, and the main results about these questions. And we can explain that, in general, there is not a statistical difference in the responses, but we can note, we, we need to define uh, all uh, questions and sections to view what are the response of the, of the course. In general, talking with the students, the most important thing to implement a low or a high density course is the motivation of the student. If the motivation of the student is high, if you are working with three, four uh, softwares and explain the softwares in, uh, in, in high uh, precision to uh, develop a project, the students are worried, that, oh, why you cannot explain more questions, more uh, software? Why do you, uh, is it the best option? Uh, I can uh, use this uh, option. And for example, in the high density course, 
Ernesto, do you say me if I, I, have, I, have, I am wrong? Mm. We can define two groups. The persons who arrive, okay, I will uh, learn about mm, softwares. My motivation, I don't have a lot of motivation. And in the first week, when you have explained three <laughs> options, bye bye. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, very quick for me. But the students who have the necessity to, to, to present a project, or maybe the students uh, who likes the informatic tools, uh, like so much the high density course, because it's not necessary to have a lot of options of application of a software, and I can only need the two, three, four options that can me allow to pass the project from this point to this point and improve in this pass.